<clears throat> okay. Hi again. I think that lasted a whole of five minutes, which was enough time to make a phone call. <laughs> yeah. I rang up and I asked after 12 minutes ish of reading as to where the raunchy part of the book was that I was supposed to not giggle. Now, I got told by by my friend to basically turn to page 425 and start reading. Apparently this was the part that made him go, wow, women will read it but they won't watch it. No idea. But we will see. Okay, so take two, I think. Now that you've watched 12 minutes of me reading rules and everything, you can watch me read the supposed raunchy part. And I still haven't found my glasses. Ah! Oh. Okay. Alright, I'll read from the start of the paragraph ish type thing. I don't know. The description in this is just the. Uh, I thought it was going to be more, yeah, anyway, um, okay, I knock timidly on room 612 and wait, or should that be 612, I don't know how Americans say that, I'd call it 612, maybe it's 612, I don't know, whichever, but I knock timidly on room 612 and wait, Christian opens the door, he's on his cell. He blinks at me in complete surprise, then holds the door open wide and beckons me into his room. All the redundancy packages concluded. And the cost? Christian whistles between his teeth. Sheesh, that was one expensive mistake. And Lucas? I glance around the room. He's in a suit, like the one at the Heathman. The furnishings here, furnishings here are ultra-modern, bearing now. All muted dark purples and golds with bronze starbursts on the walls. Christian walks over to a dark wood unit and pulls open a door to reveal a minibar. He indicates that I should help myself, then wanders into the bedroom. I assume it's so I can no longer hear his conversation. I shrug. He didn't stop his call when I entered his study that time. I hear water running. He's filling the bath. <clears throat> I help myself to an orange juice. He ambles back into the room. Have Andrea send me the schematics? Barney said he'd crack the problem. Christian laughs. No, Friday. There's a plot of land here that I'm interested in. Yeah, get Bill to call. No, tomorrow. Should I be going dot 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 every time there's a dot 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 or... <clears throat> Okay. I want to see what Georgia will offer if we move in. Christian doesn't take his eyes off me. Handing me a glass, he points to an ice bucket. If their incentives are attractive enough. Dot, dot, dot. I think we should consider it, though I'm not sure about the damned heat here. Dot, dot, dot. I agree. Detroit has its advantages too, and it's cooler. Dot, dot, dot. His face darkens momentarily. Why? Get Bill to call. Tomorrow. Dot, dot, dot. Not too early. He hangs up and stares at me, his face unreadable, and the silence stretches between us. Okay, my turn to talk. Sorry. Okay. Dot, dot, dot. My turn to talk. You didn't answer my question, I murmur. No, I didn't, he says quietly, his grey eyes wide and cautious. No, you didn't answer my question, or no, you didn't love her. Okay, how that's her business, I've got no idea. I'm just going blindly here, but I'm guessing that she's prying into something she shouldn't be. Okay, he folds his arms and leans against the wall, and a small smile plays upon his lips. What are you doing here, Anastasia? I've just told you. He takes a deep breath. 
No, I didn't love her. He frowns at me, amused yet puzzled. I can't believe I'm holding my breath. I sag like an old cloth sack as I release it. What a description. This chick's supposed to be all dressed up really, really nicely. Then all of a sudden she goes, <sighs> yeah, brilliant, brilliant descriptioning there. My apologies. <clears throat> So apparently, I sag like an old cloth sack as I release it. If you read that one line without reading anything else around it, that can be taken so many ways. Because if I got a male to read that, we won't, we won't, broach our subject. Mm -mm. No. Okay. Reading on. Well, thank heavens for that. How would I feel if he actually loved the witch? Wow, if only he could hear what she was thinking. Any submissive thinking like that, I'd get a wallop, I reckon. And yes, I said I reckon, okay? Keep reading. You're quite the green-eyed goddess, Anastasia. Who would have thought? And she's just been... Read. Are you making fun of me, Mr. Grey? I wouldn't dare, he shakes his head solemnly, but he has a wicked gleam in his eye. Oh, I think you would, and I think you do often. He smirks as I give him back the words he said to me before. His eyes darken. Please stop biting your lip. You're in my room. I haven't set eyes on you for nearly three days and I've flown a long way to see you. His tone has changed to soft, sensual. His blackberry buzzes. Oh, the phone. Okay. What about rings? Distracting us both, and he switches it off without glancing to see who it is. My breath hitches. I know where this is going. But we're supposed to talk. He takes a deep breath. Whoops. <laughs> Read the wrong line. He takes a step toward me, wearing his sexy predatory walk. Okay, I get it. So if they're good looking, they're called an admirer, but if they're ugly, they're called a stalker? Duh. I want you, Anastasia, now, and you want me. That's why you're here. I really did want to know, I whisper as a defense. Well, now that you do, are you coming or going? I flush as he comes to a halt in front of me. Coming, I murmur, staring anxiously up at him. Oh, I hope so, he gazes down at me. You were so mad at me, he breathes. Yes, I don't remember anyone but my family ever being mad at me. I like it. You just want to read the Punisher. That's why dominance likes submissives getting angry, so they can use a really nice leather flogger on their butt. He runs the tips of his fingers down my neck, or my cheek, sorry. Oh my, his proximity, his delicious Christian smell. I have a question. Why would you name the dominant Christian if you're going to use a phrase? Like that. Couldn't you have named him Larry? Or Dominique? Dominic? Sorry, not Dominique. Could have called him Don. Could have called him anything. I was really looking forward to reading this book. <clears throat> I really was. I'm hoping that this gets better. But anyway. 
Uh, yes, he runs the tips of his fingers down my cheek. Oh my. Uh, his proximity, his delicious Christian smell. I can't read that line without thinking just... Not very nice thoughts come to mind. Uh, we're supposed to be talking, but my heart is pounding. My blood singing as it courses through my body. Desire pooling, unfurling, dot, 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 everywhere. Christian bends and runs his nose along my shoulder and up to the base of my ear. His fingers slipping into my hair. We should talk, I whisper, later. There's so much I want to say. Me too. He plants a soft kiss under my earlobe. I'm just going like this and I'm going to continue reading. While his fingers tighten in my hair, pulling my head back, he exposes my throat to his lips. Unless he's going to bite into her neck, I don't think that that type of position is pretty appropriate for somebody who is kind of not into that. Sorry. His teeth skim my chin and he kisses my throat. He's a very gentle dominant, that's all I've got to say. Well, oh. mm. I want you, he breathes. I moan and reach up and grasp his arms. Are you bleeding? He continues to kiss me. Holy fuck, does nothing slip by him. It's in the book. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yes, I whispered, embarrassed. Do you have cramps? No, I flush. Jeez. Dot, dot, dot. He stops and looks down at me. Did you take your pill? Yes. How mortifying is this? Let's go have a bath. Oh? He takes my hand and leads me into the bathroom. It's dominated by a super king's... Let me start again. My bad, I got ahead of myself, you know, because it's sort of about going to a bathtub. He takes my hand and leads me into the bedroom. It's dominated by a super king-sized bed with elaborate drapes. But we don't stop there. He takes me into the bathroom, which is two rooms, all aquamarines and white limestone. It's huge. In the second room, a sunken bath big enough for four people with stone steps that lead into it. It's slowly filling with water. Steam rises gently above the foam and I notice a stone bench that runs all the way around the bar. Candles flicker to the side. Wow, he's done all this while on the foam. Do you have a hair tie? <clears throat> I blink at him, fish into my jeans pocket and pull out my hair elastic. Put your hair up, he orders softly. I do as he asks. It's warm and sultry beside the bath and my camisole starts to stick. He leans over and shuts off the faucet, leading me back into the first part of the bathroom. He stands behind me as we face the wall-sized mirror above the two glass sinks. Take your sandals off, he murmurs, and I oblige quickly dropping them to the stone, sandstone floor. Lift up your arms, he breathes. I do as I'm told and he lifts my camisole over my head so that I'm topless standing in front of him. Not taking his eyes off mine, he reaches around and undoes the top button of my jeans and the zipper. I'm going to have you in the bathroom, Anastasia. Really? Leaning down, he kisses my neck. I move my head to one side to give him easier access. Hooking his thumbs into my jeans, he slowly slides them down my legs, sinking down behind me as he pulls them and my panties to the floor. Step out of your jeans. Grasping the edge of the sink, I do just that. I am now naked, staring at myself, and he's kneeling behind me. He kisses and then slowly bites my behind, making me gasp. 
He stands and stares at me once more. In the mirror, I try hard to stay still, ignoring my natural inclination to cover myself. He splays his hand across my belly, the span of his hand almost reaching from hip to hip. Look at you, you are so beautiful. He murmurs, see how you feel. He clasps both hand, both my hands in his, his palms against the backs of my hands, his fingers between mine so that my fingers are splayed. He places my hands on my belly, feel how soft your skin is. His voice is soft and low. He moves my hands in a slow circle, then upward towards my breast. Feel how full your breasts are. Okay. Um, where's the part where he's taking her? Okay, hold on. <clears throat> I'm getting a red. I need a drink. My coffee's over there, though. Okay. Ah, la da di da. All right. His breathing is ragged, matching mine. When did you start your period, Anastasia? He asks out of the blue, gazing down at me. Uh, yesterday. I mumble in my highly aroused state. Good. He releases me and turns me around. Hold on to the sink, he orders, and drags my hips back again. Like he did in the playroom, so I'm bending down. He reaches between my legs and pulls on the blue string. What? and gently takes my tampon out and tosses it into the nearby toilet. Holy F dot dot K. Sweet mother of all dot 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 Gs. And then he's inside me dot 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 R. Exclamation mark. Skin against skin dot dot dot. Moving slowly at first dot dot dot. Easily teasing me, pushing me dot dot dot. Oh my. I grip onto the sink, panting, forcing myself back on him, feeling him inside me. Oh, the sweet agony. I'm a bit caught up. The blue string of a tampon. Have they started colour coordinating things now? Really? Okay, sorry, I just... A blue string. To me, I, I'm pretty sure that tampons have white string. Just why you would pick blue, I have no idea. But anyway, maybe it matched her lingerie. Sorry. <clears throat> Oh my, I grip onto the sink, panting, forcing myself back on him, feeling him inside me. Oh, the sweet agony. His hand, hands clasp my hips. He sets a punishing rhythm in and out, and he reaches around and finds my clitoris massaging me. Dot, dot, dot. Oh, geez. I can feel myself quicken. That's right, baby, he rasps as he grinds into me. Any submissive will know what I'm mming about right now. That's right, baby, he rasps as he grinds into me, angling his hips, and it's enough to send me flying, flying high. Well, uh, dot, 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 and I come, loudly, gripping for dear life onto the sink as I spiral down through my orgasm. Everything's spinning and clenching at once. He follows, clasping me tightly, his front on my back, and he climaxes and calls my name like it's a litany or a prayer. Oh, Anna. His breathing is ragged in my ear in perfect synergy with mine. Oh, baby, will I ever get enough of you? He whispers.
We sink slowly to the floor and he wraps his arms around me, imprisoning me. Will it always be like this? So overwhelming, so all-consuming, so bewildering, and... The killing. I wanted to talk, but now I've spent days from his lovemaking, wondering if I will ever get enough of him. Um... Yeah. Fifty Shades of Grey. I've basically done the Fifty Shades of Grey challenge. And... All I can say is judging from the passages that I have read, and I'll be honest with you with this, this might be a very good book to uh, what we call vanilla people, which is people who are not into bondage restraint. I guess it would be. It would be something that is exceptionally much of a turn on for you. But this Christian Grey. I would have to say is probably the most gentlest dominant I have ever heard of. He he would be a very good person for somebody to start a dominance and submissive relationship with because it would be A submission to authority that is being asserted toward you. But I can honestly say that I'm bored and I've only read 20 minutes of this book and that was clicking from page to page. I am very sorry that I didn't get the giggles up and I didn't laugh. I do hope that you forgive me for my, I guess you could say my criticising of the writing. Because the honest truth is, is uh, E.L. James has probably sold more copies of books than I could with the books that I'm writing. And let's face it. If it appeals to people, it appeals to people, but I'm sorry guys, it's, <clears throat> all I can say is I try to find the raunchiest parts in there and none of them are raunchy to me. I mean, it'd be raunchy if she was, well maybe I didn't find a baby in there, if she had been bound to a table or bound to something where she had no mobility on a certain part of her body and be at the merciless hand of the dominant to the point of being taken as what this book refers to but see the the actual dominant submission is You are there for the use of the male. And this book to me does actually seem like a typical traditional lifestyle with a hint of rough sex. I honestly, I don't know what else to say. All I can do is, I suppose, read the entire book and then I can come back and give you an actual review after reading the entire thing. But Fifty Shades of Grey Challenge, I suppose that I expected I was going to be in a bit of awe and then just sitting back and, you know, when you sit back, you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to read this. No. I'm sorry. 
it's I probably get more satisfaction out of watching porn. Just type it into the taskbar. But with saying that, I can understand where the criticizing comments are coming from because I just made some myself. Not to the degree of what I heard some people say and witness people say, but I'm going to cut the video off. Thank you for watching. And yeah. I hope you guys have a good day because I've just wasted 45 minutes of mine. Bye.